right okay and welcome to this video on amine so i'm showing off my swanky new black lab coat where i've been described as everything from a wizard to a concentration camp god borderline and um, but right where to start off with so amines you need to know about them either being primary secondary tertiary or quaternary so it's just to do with the amount of carbons they're attached to so if it's attached to one carbon primary if it's attached to three tertiary so four you need to know about the basic and the nucleophilic properties of the amines. Now you need to be able to understand that effectively the phenyl amine is the weakest base and it works through to sort of the secondary being the strongest base. You only need to look at the electron density around it, the electronic effects. There are other factors in there, the steric, which explains why the tertiary is less basic than the secondary, but kind of just have to go with it in terms of learning those few. So the reason why, so if we look at the primary amine here, what's actually happening is we've got a positive inductive effect from this methyl attached to it. So the aryl groups actually push electron density towards the nitrogen. So it increases the electron density around this, which means if it wants to behave as a nucleophile, a lone pair donor, it's got a higher density to go off and attack. And likewise, it will behave as a better base because the H plus ion is going to be more attracted to that electron rich region. The opposite is true for the phenyl attached here. So the phenyl is actually electron withdrawing. So it's pulling electron density away from the nitrogen and into its own ring. So because of that, the electron density around this decreases. So therefore, it's got less density to play with to go off and behave as a nucleophile and likewise less density to attract incoming hydrogen ions. And obviously conversely if you want to talk about the secondary amine you would just have two positive inductive effects if it was say methyls, ethyls or whatever each side. Um, so up here is an example of how it's behaving as a base. So a base obviously proton acceptor so the, the dye and triamines tend to have really bad smells. They stink of rotting fish, decaying animals, etc. So the way to solve that, if you are near sort of a hobo or your friend really smells that day, throw some acid at them. Because what will happen is the acid is going to react with the base. And across here you can see effectively we've formed an ionic salt. So I've drawn that out properly there for you. So the positive charge on the nitrogen area, the ne negative charge on the chloride, effectively it's just going to form an ionic bond. So ionics, well they are soluble, so it will dissolve and it gets rid of the smell. Uh, for legal purposes, please do not throw acid at people, it's illegal. If you wanted to get your smell back for some unknown reason, then what you can do is just add any base. So add something like sodium hydroxide. So obviously the OH minus would take the H plus off there, give you water, and the Na plus would combine with the, the chloride, give you NaCl, and it would give you your original compound back. Um, in terms of naming these, since some people have a bit of trouble actually naming the amines, what you need to look at is just what's actually attached to it. So ending amine. Look at what's actually stuck on it. So we've got a methyl group here, and we've got an ethyl group. So all you do is just put them in alphabetical order. So that would just be called ethyl methyl amine. And that's that, nice and straightforward. Right, now the main mechanism what you need to be able to do for the amines is nucleophilic substitution. So you should be very used to this by now. It's more or less exactly the same as what you did at AS. So what's going to happen? Right, we've got our ammonia molecule floating about here. And we've got this haloalkane. We are going to have some delta charges on them. So a small positive, small negative. Reason why, bromine's more electronegative than the carbon, pulls the electrons in that covalent bond towards it. So the lone pair on this nitrogen will be attracted to the delta positive carbon. So again, start at your lone pair, point where you are going. Now carbon can only have four bonds, so the weakest bond will break. 
So start at the bond, point towards the bromine. So the bromine will leave as bromide and we will finish with this across here. Now do not show the bromide taking the hydrogen. The bromide will be in such a small concentration in comparison to this, it wouldn't do it. What you can either show, if you want to show it mechanistically, get into the final step. Either A, just have it breaking off like that, it will do that. Or B, show another ammonia molecule removing the H. So you would form NH4+, plus, and obviously the NH4+, plus would therefore combine with the bromide and give you an ammonium salt that way. Now doing this reaction, they need to use a, hu use a huge excess of ammonia. The reason why is if you look at the product, what you will form, starting with the ammonia here, we've made a primary amine. If you link back to what I said earlier there, the primary amine is going to be more basic and more nucleophilic, or a better nucleophile rather, than the ammonia. So what can happen is the product what you've produced can actually start to compete with the ammonia and you can end up with sort of multiple substitutions and get many organic products. So exactly the same as before, this can now attack that and effectively you end up with a di sorry, yeah, you end up with a di substitute, a diamine. So you'd have um, two propyl branches coming off instead, and you would then create a secondary. And again, the secondary is more basic than the primary, so it's going to act as a better nucleophile as well. So the secondary would therefore come in and create a tertiary. Now the tertiaries, as I said, um, a bit of a dip, you start getting steric crowding and things but A, sorry, A2 doesn't really go into it in that much depth. One of the main uses which you need to be aware of for the, the quaternary amines is in things like cationic surfactants, so hair shampoo, soaps, things like that where you see them actually in there. Um, I'm not gonna draw it out properly, I'll just do a scribble. So here, as you can see, the nitrogen attached to four carbon groups. You've got your big, long chain coming off there. So this is your non-polar hydrocarbon chain, and you've got the polar head there. You would usually have some sort of counter-ion counter attracted to that positive charge, but the reason I've left it off is just to highlight, because some people get confused about naming things cationic or anionic. Look at the charge on this head. So it's a positive. So that is a cationic surfactant, cat positive. Um, you need to know a couple of ways of actually making the amines. Now, if you wanted to get an amine group stuck on a benzene ring like that, obviously the amine wouldn't directly attack benzene. Benzene, as I said in the aromatic video, it's got an electron dense, well, it's got a high electron density. So it would scare away the lone pair on this. Effectively, high electron densities coming into contact with each other, not going to happen. So if you want to get an amine group stuck on that ring, what you would first need to do is nitrate it. Once you've nitrated it, a mixture of tin and concave Cl with some heat. What the tin does, the tin provides the electrons, the HCl obviously provides the H+. And we can convert it into the amine in a bit of water as well. Strictly what you would probably get is an ammonium chloride. And you would need to add a little bit of base to, to get rid of that to turn it into your pure amine there. You can use other very powerful reducing agents as well. Things like lithium aluminium hydride. So if you want to show that equation wise... All you would need to do is obviously, when you are reacting these together, just same as you've seen in the past, obviously the hydrogen in the square brackets. Just the same as oxygen in the square brackets is for oxidation.
The other one which you need to be aware of is turning your nitrile group into an amine. So we usually use the cyanide ion first to sort of if we want to extend the carbon chain before we actually introduce the amine functional group. So the cyanide ion would extend your chain, it brings in the nitrogen as well, and then a mixture of nickel and hydrogen. So the nickel's just there acting as a catalyst. So again, it's just reduction, you're just smacking on lots of hydrogens. So we're cracking open this triple bond, hydrogen's on there, and we've turned our nitrile into an amine. And that's it for the amine video. Thank you.